Hi, I'm Peter Cavana, and welcome to part seven of Preaching an Unknown God, our exegesis, our study of Paul's visit to Athens in Acts 17, and hopefully with a lot of practical application for evangelists and gospel communicators. I want to use some words that I think sum up the evangelist's approach in Acts 17, Paul's trip to Athens, uh, starting with this word, the word pleasant. The evangelist was a pleasant presence in Athens. Uh, we saw that in the story. He was complimentary to them. He preached that they were God's offspring, God's children. He wasn't competitive to them. And it should remind us of, uh, of the ministry of Jesus. I'm thinking particularly of Luke 7, verse 34, where he's called the friend of sinners. If we're going to reach sinners, we're going to have to be the, the friend of sinners. And that little piece in Luke 7, where Jesus is called the friend of tax collectors and sinners, that's in the context there of him being criticized they criticize him for being the friend of sinners but Jesus says this he says wisdom is proved correct or proved right by her children in other words the results will speak for themselves the evangelist must be pleasant I was discussing this uh, with a group of evangelist one evening and we were talking about uh, street preaching you know when people just preach in the street and uh, I'm not against this I think this is fantastic very much like the book of Acts in so many ways but one of the things that came up was the use of amplification if a street preacher doesn't have a microphone or any way to to amplify him or herself then of course it's quite difficult to appear pleasant. It's quite difficult to be charming if you're shouting. And uh, so in this, in this discussion that we had, we agreed that where possible, if you're going to preach in the street, it would be great to have a microphone of some kind, just so that you can continue to appear friendly rather than confrontational. Of course, most evangelists, most people witnessing and sharing their faith aren't doing it in the centre of a town. They're doing it in a coffee shop or at work. And uh, so let me just remind you, you don't need a mic, <laughs> but you will need to remain pleasant and charming throughout the whole experience. And I promise you, in the words of Jesus, wisdom will be proved rightly by her children. This will no doubt yield much better results our second word is intelligent i hope we've seen throughout this study that paul uses his intelligence to reach the athenians he thinks carefully about what he's going to say now it's not that he changes the gospel please let's be really clear about that the gospel is the gospel and if we're not preaching the same gospel as preached 2,000 years ago then we're not preaching the gospel at all however as we've previously reflected Paul preaches it in their own language and I'm not talking now about a spoken language I'm talking about a cultural language he preaches it in a way that they can understand. We saw that, in fact, in this particular instance, Paul is, in a sense, using an apologetic method, meaning he is trying to persuade them uh, of the reality of the existence of God. He talks about creation. He uses what we've called in this series natural theology, theology based on nature. If there is a design, then there must be a designer. If there is a piece of art, then there must have been an artist. And if there is a creation, 
then there must be a creator. Now, this may not always be the best way to preach, but this is the way he preaches to a group of people whose ideas about God were very different to that of the Christian faith and indeed of Judaism. And so being an evangelist requires being highly skilled, highly intelligent. Remember the lifeboat. We said that if we were stranded in the sea, we would want uh, uh, those coming to rescue us to be competent uh, as well as keen on saving us. So I'm all in favour of being charismatic, but we must also be competent. I remember Reinhard Bonke, that tremendous evangelist, uh, used to say all the time, I'm just a simple evangelist. Now, of course, that's true, and we all know what Reinhard meant, but in many ways, that's the last thing he was. He was a highly educated and clever man, and he knew what he was doing. And the same is true of Paul. We read many times in Acts that he would go into the synagogue and he would reason with those who were there, or, or he would have debates with them. So Paul wasn't just about monologues. Paul was about having dialogues with people. One of the things that we have to do if we're going to have dialogue is we're going to have to listen as well as speak. Let me remind you that over in Acts chapter 8, Philip the evangelist, in fact the only evangelist named in the New Testament, so he's someone to study carefully I think. Philip is led by the Spirit to go to the chariot of an Ethiopian. You remember the story. And the Ethiopian is reading from Isaiah, Isaiah 53 actually. Philip is able to win that man to Christ for two reasons. First of all, he listened to him. He first listened to him reading from the, from the text, from Isaiah, and then he listened to the man's questions. So the first thing he did was listen. The second thing he did was he answered the man's questions. An evangelist must be able to answer people's questions. Now, of course, there'll be plenty of times when we'll be caught, you know, and maybe we won't have an answer, but that just should inspire us to have a good answer next time we're faced with that same issue. My old friend Steve Parsons used to say that in a court case, there are lawyers and there are witnesses. I, I appreciate that for most people, you're called to be a witness. This is what I know. This is what I, this is what I saw. But other people are called to be evangelists. They're called to be the lawyers. They're called to be people who can build a case. So, in a sense, there's no such thing as a simple evangelist. We must be intelligent uh, with our communication if we're going to reach people for the gospel. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. <laughs>